There's a story about Yosef Akamtsan Akadosh. You guys ever hear about Yosef Akamtsan Akadosh? Yosef, the holy stingy person. It's an interesting title, no? It was a rich guy a few hundred years ago. In a, in a real story, by the way. And uh, everyone knew this guy is the stingiest person on earth. People that would come to his house, he'd always walk them in, come in, have a seat. But the minute they asked for money, he would get furious. Throw them out of the house after embarrassing them. You come to my house to ask me for $100. You come to my house to ask me for $5,000 for your yeshiva, for your kids, for your this, for your that. How dare you? And he became known as Yosef Akamtsan. The stingy Yosef, because he had money, but he refused to give it to anyone. One day, he died. And he was hated so much by his keila that no one showed up to the funeral. No one showed up to the funeral. This is obviously a horrendous situation. He didn't exactly leave such a good past. You know, and they say, you know, we say it actually on Tfilah. Tov Shem, Mishem and Tov. It's better to have a good name than a lot of money. Shlomo Amelech said it. Because a good name lasts. Money doesn't last. It's just this life. And even this life, it's questionable if it's going to last. So he dies. No one shows up to the funeral. And all of a sudden, the day after the funeral, all of these poor people show up at the rabbi's house knocking at his house tens and tens of people asking him for tzedakah he says where'd you all come from because we all live here what all of a sudden all of you went broke at the same time because no we haven't had money for many years because so well, how did you survive until now he said well we don't really know but we know that every time we go to the stores the stores would give us the money. The stores would give us the goods. We didn't have to pay. If I went to the store to buy milk, the guy from the milk company, would, the guy from the store that sells milk, would give me the milk. But all of a sudden today I went, and he said, I'm sorry. I can't give it to you. And the same thing with the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. So now, the Rav was not the fool. And he's trying to figure out where did this money come from? So he goes to all of the merchants. He says, who gave you the money to pay for all these people? Why did you stop giving it to them? He says, well, I gave it to them because every week I would get an envelope with his name on it. And the envelope would have the exact amount of money of what he needs for his groceries, or what he needs for his laundry, or what he needs for whatever goods the guy was selling. And the envelope didn't come this week. Because who gave you the envelope? He goes, no, no, that's one thing I'm not allowed to say. I promise the person that's given the envelope, I'm not allowed to say. So he went to the next guy, the next guy said the same thing. I got the envelope, but I'm not allowed to say. I'm not allowed to say, I'm not allowed to say. Rabbi invited all of them to his house and says, I demand that all of you tell me who gave you the envelope. As a rabbi, back then they respected the rabbi. They all admitted it was Yosef. Yosef Akamtsan. Immediately the rabbi started hysterical crying and started praying non-stop to do tshuva for all the things they said about him, thought about him. Yosef, why did you do this to us? And I'm not sure whether the story goes that he had a dream about him or he actually did one of these mystical things where he asked to be shown some type of answer from Yosef. But long story short is that he saw Yosef and he sees Yosef all wearing white looking very holy in the next world and he says, why did you do this to us? Why did you pretend to be such a cheap guy when in reality you were feeding the entire community? He says, because I learned one time that if you want your mitzvah and you want all of it, you want to make sure that no one knows and on top of it, the receiver, the receiver doesn't even know who gave it to them and even the highest level that I did as I tried to make sure that the receiver hates me. And what was your reward for this mitzvah? He 
says Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and David the Melech came to welcome me to Olam Abba. David the Melech was making the music, and the Avot came to me, and they brought me to Olam Abba. He says, but you know, I still miss one thing. There's only one thing I still miss about this world. Because what do you miss? I miss writing the envelopes. There's no envelopes in Olam Abba. There's no more chance for me to do more mitzvot. So that's when Yosef Akamtsan got the name Yosef Akamtsan Akadosh, the holy stingy Yosef. When we know the value of each mitzvah, we'll chase it like we chase money. We'll chase it like we chase treasure. We'll chase it like we're chasing something that's extremely valuable. We're not going to focus about whether anyone notices or anyone doesn't notice. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat